in this video we're going to look at inequalities we're going to look at how to solve them and then how to present the answer I usually do find that students do struggle with these especially when having to show the answer however they are very repetitive and they always follow the same pattern and so with these five examples that I'm going to show you in this video I'm sure that it's going to make a lot more sense by the end of this video so the way it works is as follows we'll start with number one which says x squared minus 3x minus 4 and you can go ahead and solve that as if pretending that this was an equal sign so I'm going to do that on the side pretending that that was an equal sign so here you have options once again you can factorize or you could use the quadratic formula this one will factorize quite nicely as x minus 4 x plus 1 equal to 0 therefore x would equal to 4 and x would equal to minus 1 now this is not your answer and you also don't want to say oh well because of this being a negative we'll just say that x must be smaller than 4 and x must be smaller than minus 1 it doesn't work like that what does happen however is you take these answers that you've just obtained and you put those on a number line from smallest to biggest so it'll be minus 1 first and then 4 then what I want you to imagine is that those two numbers have just divided your number line into three different regions A, B and C what you now need to do is go and choose different values in region A or choose a value in region A choose a value in region B and choose a value in region C and see what answer you get once you plug that value into the equation now you can plug the value into this equation over here or into the brackets it's totally up to you so for example in the region A I'm gonna choose any number to the left of minus 1 so I'm gonna choose minus 50 if you had to go and plug minus 50 into this expression you would find that you would end up with a positive value I'll show you what I, how I did that you would wherever you see X you would replace it with a bracket and put the number minus 50 you would then type all of that on the calculator and you would get a value of 2646 now teachers aren't really interested in what that number was point is is that you ended up with a positive next I'll look at region B where I'll substitute some number that is between minus 1 and 4 so I'll just choose 0 upon substituting 0 into this equation we ended up with a negative answer we will then choose a region in interval C or some uh, we'll choose a number in the region C so I'm going to choose 50 upon plugging that into the equation I got a positive answer now that we have our three regions identified we need to go back to the original question which is asking us to find out where the equation is less than zero now what does less than zero mean less than zero means negative right because numbers that are less than zero are negative and so where do we see the negatives here we go over there and so your answer must be inside region B now how do we show that mathematically this is where students often do struggle well if you're doing the crocodile technique croc you would know that you'd have to say that X must be bigger than minus 1 and X must be smaller than 4 you would then have to just say that X is an element of real numbers like that option number two that's number one option number two would be to use the bracket method would say that X is going from minus 1 up to 4 and for this method you just have to say that X is an element like that just a little extra I'm just gonna spend a bit of extra time on this one people really do struggle with this one so you need to read it from the point of view of X so for this part over here that is saying that X must be bigger than minus 1 well yes numbers inside region B are definitely bigger than minus 1 and then this part over here is saying that X must be less than 4 that is true because numbers that are in between in region B which is between the two dotted lines those numbers are less than 4 so they are numbers that are bigger than minus 1 
and less than 4 and that is what that crocodile method would be telling us over there and then once again option number two would be just to use the brackets I've used curly brackets well I haven't used square brackets because if you look at the original question they haven't said smaller than and equal to they've just said smaller than moving on to number two first step would be to pretend that that is an equal sign and then solve it as per normal using the quadratic formula or factorizing. This one factorizes quite easily as follows. And so x would equal to 5 and x would equal to 2. Now what you do is you take those two numbers and you put them on your number line. You don't want to do anything else with those numbers. So you have now divided your number line into three different regions once again. We are once again call it A. B and C. You then choose numbers in each of the regions. So in region A, I would plug in zero into the original equation, which is in bracket, uh, sorry, which is in yellow, or you could plug it into the bracketed form, completely up to you. If you plug in a value in region A, you should get a positive number over here. I then choose a number in region B. Those are numbers between two and five, so I'll just choose three, for example. If you had to do that, you should get a negative. And if you choose something in region C, any number you like, I'm going to choose 200. If you plug 200 into that, you are going to get a positive. You now go to the original question where they're asking where the equation is smaller than or equal to zero. What does smaller than zero mean? Well, that means negatives. And so we look for the negatives, which is over there. And so our answer is between 2 and 5. So option number 1 would be to say that x is bigger than 2 and smaller than 5. Notice I am including the 2 because I'm using that and that. That is simply because of the original question. Then with this technique, you would have to add that x is an element of real numbers. Option number two, which is my favorite option, is to simply say x is an element going from the number two up to number five in square brackets because that is the way, or that is how we show that those numbers are included. Let's just see if this all makes sense once again. We want all of, we want this expression to be negative and we found it to be negative in region B and so those are numbers between two and five. Number three, Moving on to number three. You don't have to do this, but typically people don't like to work with a negative in front of the x squared. And so we can change that because we have a zero on the other side. The only time you can't change it is if you had like some type of equation like this. And then you couldn't, for example, oh sorry, if that was a negative, you can't now just go change each of those signs because then technically you would have to change the y as well. But because your equation is, has a zero like that, it's absolutely fine for you to go change the sign. However, there is a little catch. When you're busy with inequalities and you divide by a negative like that, you must flip your inequality sign over. Right now, it just becomes one of the standard questions where we could typically imagine this being equal to zero. You could then go factorize or make use of the quadratic formula and you'd end up with answers of 20 and x is equal to minus 1. And so your two numbers on the number line would be minus 1 and 20. And so you could then divide into your number line into three regions, A, B, and C. Once again, we just go plug values in. Remember, we're using the new modified formula, so we will not make use of this one. We've already changed everything. Because this minus 1 and this 20 came from this equation over here. And so we need to use that one now. So I'll highlight it over here. And so you can go plug values into that that I've highlighted in yellow. Or you could use these brackets. And so in interval A, I'm going to plug minus 100 into that equation. And if you do that, you would get a positive value over here. Remember, whenever you plug in, do it in brackets. Then if you plugged in a value in interval B, um, a number between minus 1 and 20, I'm just going to choose 0, and that would give you a negative answer. And then I'm going to choose a value in interval C, so I'm going to choose 1,000. If you plug 1,000 into that equation, you end up with a positive. You now look at the original question. Well, 
the modified one now and you want to know where all of that in yellow is bigger than zero bigger than zero means positive and so the positives are where the pluses are so that's there and there so your answer has to lie in those two intervals now here's where people make mistakes this region here at a and at c they are completely separate to each other you cannot link them together so you've got to give two separate answers so you have to say something such as okay and, and let's quickly talk all the numbers that are in region a are they numbers that are smaller than minus one or bigger than minus one well, those are numbers that are smaller than minus 1. So x must be smaller than minus 1. Or, and then in interval c, those are the numbers that are bigger than 20. So you'll say x must be bigger than 20. And then you'll just say that x is an element of r. Your other option is to use the interval notation. So you would say that x is an element. And then you would say from minus infinity up to minus 1. Or from 20 up to infinity those are your two options you only have to do one of those techniques and then I have not included any of the numbers because the original question does not have an included sign so yes please take note that the original question did have a smaller than zero sign but after we flipped everything over it changes to a bigger than zero sign moving on to number four x minus 3, 1 minus x bigger than or equal to 0. First step would be to, to just pretend that it's equal to 0. Aha! And now remember, in one of the previous videos, we realized that brackets are good. You don't want to, you don't want to um, now go multiply the brackets together and then end up having to factorize again. I mean, that wouldn't be wrong. It would just waste a bit of your time. And so we can go straight to the answer now, which says that x minus 3 would have to equal 0, or x, um, 1 minus x would have to equal to 0. So for this one, it would be x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. So these are your two answers. So those are going to go on the number line, 1 and 3. So we've now divided our region into three intervals a b and c we just go plug values in so we can just plug it into this original equation so for interval a it's numbers smaller than one I'm going to choose minus 100 if you had to go plug minus 100 into those brackets you would get a negative answer then I'm going to choose a number in between 1 and 3 so we can choose the number 2 if you had to plug 2 into that into these brackets in the place of x you would get a positive answer because it would be a negative and a negative and then for interval c I'm going to choose a number bigger than 3 so I'm going to choose 100 if you did that you'd get a positive and a negative which is a negative now what we do is we go to the original question which is asking where everything is bigger than or equal to 0 numbers that are bigger than or equal to 0 are positive so we look for all the pluses in in here and so that's there and so our answer must lie in interval b those are numbers that, numbers that go from 1 up to 3 and so if you're using the crocodile method you would say that x must be bigger than or equal to 1 and smaller than or equal to 3 so remember when your answer lies between two numbers you can link them together like this but when we looked at number 3 the answers were in two separate intervals and so we had to give two separate answers and then for this technique you must just say that x is an element of r for number two um, sorry for the second method you would just say that x is an element going from one up to three we are using square brackets because the question has told us bigger than and equal to zero Moving on to the last question for this video, that is number 5, so that's x squared minus 4x smaller than 0. You can pretend that it's x squared minus 4x equal to 0. Don't freak out when it looks like this. It's actually easier than the normal kind of trinomial. All you do is you take out an x and you're left with x minus 4. And your two answers will be, well for this bracket, that's simply x equals to 0. And then for this one, it's just x equals to 4. Those are your two number line values, so that's 0 and 4. And so we've divided our interval up. And so that's a. 
sorry, not there, that's A, B, and C. You then go choose values, and then you plug those values into either here or over there. So for interval A, I'm going to choose minus 100. If you go plug that in, you should get a positive value over here. For interval B, I'm going to choose the number 2. If you plug that into your equation, you should get a negative. For interval C, I'm going to choose 1,000. If and, and remember, these values I'm choosing are, you can choose whatever you like, as long as it's anything more than 4. Okay, so now I plug in 1,000, you're going to get a positive. Now we have a look at the original question. They would like to know where that equation is negative and so or smaller than zero smaller than zero means negative and so we look over here and so our answer is inside interval b which is the numbers going from zero up to four so using crocodile method you would say x is bigger than zero smaller than four x is an element of r not including the zero and not including the four because this is not including if you were using the interval notation you would say x is an element going from 0 up to 4. Please remember, I'm showing you both ways, but you only have to do one of those in the test. I hope this all makes sense. Thank you very much for watching.